Welcome, my name is Lee Hollins. I'm a retired battalion chief from Cedar Hammock Fire Rescue in Bradenton, Florida. And welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. In this session, we're gonna take a look at all the different components that are on the top of this tanker, up between those rails. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look up top. Here we are at the top of an MC-406 tanker trailer and what you're looking at here are the valving and the dome lids and as you can see there's one per compartment this is a four compartment tanker trailer so the largest compartment is going to be at the front or at the rear because this is over the axles and at the front it'll be over the axles of the truck that's pulling this so the larger compartments will be at the front and the rear and when we come in to take a closer look at each of these manholes, if you will, we'll take a look at this one. There are several components within this small manhole. One is going to be the dome lid right here. So this dome lid provides an opening of about 12 inches is all. And in an overturned situation, this is typically going to be leaking. So there are dome clamps that hazmat teams use to secure this back in place with that gasket when you have a leaking dome lid. So within this component, you have this dome lid. You also have a pressure reducing device, which will automatically reduce pressure within the gasoline tanker on its own. Nothing we need to really worry about. The other components of this system here, this is the vapor valve. So this is operated by air pressure, pneumatic pressure. And whenever the side compartment where the valves are is opened, it automatically opens all these vapor valves, which as you can see, this is connected to this rail. So this rail is hollow, and this is part of the vapor recovery system. When gasoline or diesel is offloaded to a below ground tank, uh, the vapors are pushed out, and they go into the vapor hose, which is connected to the vapor lines, and it comes up that pipe in the back, and then it is connected to this rail and the vapors go back in. So as product is being released out the bottom by gravity, the vapors are replacing that cubic footage of space within this tank. The other component here is this is the scully. What this is, is a system to prevent overfilling of this tank at the terminal. These tankers are typically filled from the bottom and with that said, there's a plug at the terminal that plugs into the side of this tanker and it's connected to this scully. The scully has a little sensor down in this compartment and if the liquid, as it's filling, if it hits that sensor, it shuts the rack down at the terminal so that this tanker cannot be overfilled and cause you problems uh, with the spill there at the terminal. The other thing I want to point out with this whole system up here is that you may see a hole like this right here and where you'll probably see that will be at the bottom of the tanker so straight down there's going to be another hole like this what this is is these compartments are separated by bulkheads so a solid piece this is a double bulkhead so if a bulkhead gets a crack in it from old age transport whatever that will allow product to go between the bulkheads and, and leak out the bottom hole. And as, as absurd as that may sound, that tells the operator, you have a bulkhead that is cracked and that product is leaking out this bottom hole. And the operators typically have a plug that they will plug in there, uh, do their job, empty these out at the gas stations, and then take it back to the terminal where that will need to be repaired. But that hole at the bottom, if there's product coming out, that means there's a cracked bulkhead. You may get that call and now you'll know what it is. And you'll know that it's easily rectified by just plugging that hole, no damage done. So with that said, we'll wrap this segment up. I'm Lee Hollins. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.